the Aston Martin DBX. Now, you this just, is, are you just trying to trip me up here? Trying to no, make me you be. You always think I'm trying to trip you up. Unremittingly negative about I, motor vehicles. I'm trying to extract opinions from uh, an opinion former such as yourself. Anyway, the Aston Martin DBX, hugely important car for Aston Martin. All right, it could be the car in which the future of the company rests upon. Well, that's, that's, you don't put that in the conditional terms. It is the car right, on which the future rests. Is there a single fiber of your being that wants one? No. But that's just that's because I don't like that type of car. I think if I was, the question I have to answer is, if I was that tasteless to want one of those, or that type of car, would I have a DBX? Probably yes. It's about the right size. I think it's a good looking car. It's like a, a slightly sexed up McCann, isn't it? Mm -hmm. They're not stupid. Yeah. They've, they've gone into the styling house and thought, what's the best looking SUV, the McCann, will make it a bit better. And I think they've done a good job. My summary of it is this. I think it's the right car at the wrong time. I think they've been undone by the market conditions. It's, it's been a bit slow coming to market. And I think the world is increasingly going to fall out of love with that type of car because to be seen in one probably isn't the wisest thing over the next few years. Is it the car to save Aston Martin? I, I really hope it does. But I, I, I fear that they've gambled on something that's just a little bit behind the curve now. Exactly, a bit late to the party. Urus Bentayga rolls. Well, not just that, else. but but you're looking at what Audi and um, and other brands are doing. You know, Porsche as well mm -hmm. with with electric vehicles yeah. and hybrids. Suddenly, you've got a great big twin turbo V8. Yeah. And I'm Athens just sure. built this new factory in Wales, St Athens, which is supposed to be the home of electrification. They're supposed to be embracing it all. And here we go with the V8. Monster there is that. The, 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 the flip side is this: I just come back from Los Angeles, and they won't be able to build enough for that market. They yeah. won't. So they'll sell a load of them. And I, I think I think it will help their balance sheet. But I just can't be asked with it. Yeah. I just, what's the point? Just buy, buy an RS6. Just be sensible. Buy an RS6. Be tasteful. It's Why? A bit, I've, I've got an analogy. Yeah. It took me all night to come up with this one. It's a bit like football hooligans during the World Cup. Right. The rest of us are just trying to sit around and enjoy the tournament quietly. Yeah. And yet they're ruining it for all of us. They're making us look bad. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not a bad analogy. I try, I've just written something about that and I, I didn't, yeah, I didn't, obviously didn't put a sophisticated amount of thought into it as Jack did. <laughs> but for me, if you could choose a sort of emblematic PR tool for, for you as a motoring enthusiast, you wouldn't choose the SUV. And at these, the, the sales increase of these things, the market mix is terrifying. You know, they're up, what's now 40, 50% of all cars sold on crossovers yeah. or yeah. something. And, um, but then they're, they're no good because ultimately they're 20, 30 percent less efficient than a normal car. And they offer you nothing uh, by way of an advantage. They're horrendous. All right. So if the SUV era, let's call it that, has to end at some point, we're obviously going to get over these things. What comes next? What do we go back to? Estates? Shooting brakes? What's, well, the, what's the next thing? Well, let's think about this logically. Everything. What has to happen is the car industry has to lead. At the moment, the car industry follows, and, and history shows that when the car industry makes cars, or makes the cars it thinks people want, you end up with bad cars. You end up with the Escort Mark V, you end up with SUVs, you end up with just turgid rubbish. When the car industry leads, i.e. it puts clever people with big foreheads in rooms and funds them, you get cars like the Renault Espace and the Renault Scenic and the Fiat Multipla, which are clever solutions to, to transportation because they are more efficient and they are more versatile. So why is it that a population that in the late 80s, early 90s was buying the Renault Espace like it was going out of fashion? This is a car that's space framed, so it's lighter than a saloon car. It casts the same size shadow on the road, but can seat seven people and is more fuel efficient. Why is it that the industry that's, that's making those cars now has to make boxes that are more expensive, heavier, uh, and and laughable. I, I don't understand it. So so an industry that used to lead now follows. This always goes wrong. Ferrari. I'll give you a good example about this. Ferrari built a car called the 550 Maranello. It's a great Ooh. front engine V12 Oof. Berlinetta from 1996, and it built. It was it was one of the best cars they ever made. Universally praised by the media and by the owners. And then Ferrari made the tragic mistake of having a customer clinic. So they, they said, everyone that's bought a 550, let's, let's, just, let's just do a straw poll, get them to Maranello, give them a big lunch, give them a bit of bloody frascati and sit them down and say, how would you like us to improve this car? Big mistake. Mm -hmm. So they all sat there basically and said, right, um, I can't be asked to change gear myself. Um, so uh, when I come out of the payage at San Rafael to go to Frejus, can I just, I want to just do that. 
I don't want to hear that rubbish. Mm -hmm. And and I don't know what it is, but when I'm driving around town in Monaco or down Sloan Square or whatever, it's a bit jiggly. So they gave us the 575, which was a comprehensively shitter version of the 550 because it, it was soft, it had no body control, and it had a terrible paddle shift gearbox. It's mm -hmm. a classic example of delivering cars you think people want. Don't do that. Have confidence in the fact that you're clever and that you, you have all these brains. Innovate. It was like Steve Jobs always said with the, with the iPod and stuff. He said, I don't go out there and ask people what they want. I decide. I make it. I yeah, you, it need, you, need, you need visionary people. Our, our industry is, has visionary people, but they're not being given the voice to, to be visionary. All right, so the campaign to bring back the MPV starts here. Well, why not? 